In this video, I want to describe palpation for the lateral hip, anterior hip, and pelvis. So with your patient supine, it's probably going to be the best position to palpate these structures. I'm going to start on the lateral hip, and I think it's important to demonstrate and kind of acknowledge the regional anatomy with the pelvis, but also the proximal femur. So I'm going to start by bringing my hands in, um, utilizing the web space of my first and second digit, and I'm gonna kind of sink into the soft tissue and I can palpate her iliac crest, which as we're gonna see in the posterior pelvis is about at the level of L4, um, lumbar spinous process. And then from that iliac crest, I can palpate around to the front and locate these two bony prominences on the front, which are gonna be her ASIS on the left and right. Um, I can drop a little bit below the ASIS, have to sink deeper a little bit and palpate the AIIS, which again are going to serve as attachment sites for some of the common, common muscles and tendons of the anterior hip structure. So we're going to get to those. But I think it's, it's nice to kind of see the ASIS, the iliac crest in relation to where her greater trochanter of her femur is, because oftentimes as you start learning to palpate, and I know I did this, I think we think the, the femur bone comes all the way up here, but it's really sitting right about there for the greater trochanter, and then you can kind of visualize the angle of inclination as the femoral head approaches and articulates with the acetabulum for our hip joint. So that's kind of a nice thing uh, for palpating the greater trochanter. As you can see, I'm gonna have to sink a little bit deep into these soft tissues to find that bony prominence. The other thing that you need to acknowledge and keep in mind with patients as you're palpating the lateral hip is they're gonna have a bursa that's gonna overlie that greater trochanter they can sometimes be kind of tender. So that might be an important thing to palpate is just that bursa, because it's gonna lie superficial to the greater trochanter. Also in this area, we can appreciate coming around from the posterior onto the greater trochanter, kind of the top of that greater trochanter, the different muscle tendon attachments. So um, we're gonna have the deep hip external rotator group, the P-go-go-Q group, which we're gonna describe in the posterior pelvis video. Uh, we're also going to have gluteus medius and gluteus minimus, which attach to that greater trochanter. Gluteus maximus is actually going to attach to the um, uh, tubercle on the femur uh, posteriorly, but then also it's going to have a common attachment to the IT band with the TFL. So you can kind of picture this triangle. It's not actually going to attach to the greater trochanter. So glute max and TFL are going to come like this and join together and attach to that iliotibial band or iliotibial tract that's gonna run down the lateral fly. And as we described in the knee video, attach distally on the tibia and to Gertie's tubercle. So that's gonna be kind of a lateral fly. Um, in this area with individuals with lateral hip pain, we have a syndrome that's commonly described, which is called greater trochanteric pain syndrome. And typically you will have this cluster of signs and symptoms that correspond with that syndrome where individuals could have some sort of bursitis or bursa irritation. They could have and likely do. Most common finding is actually gluteus medius tendon pathology, a tendinopathy or a muscle irritation. So glute med as it attaches to that greater trochanter is regionally important. And then some sort of IT band irritation is also a common finding. So those things are all in this area and they can all become irritated. As we sneak around to the anterior pelvis and anterior thigh, uh, we can find our ASIS again to palpate. And if we remember our attachments on the ASIS, these become important. So uh, as I mentioned, so the tensor fascia lata, TFL, is gonna have an attachment to that ASIS and then gonna run down and attach to that T-band. We're also gonna have a muscle that attaches and runs this way. It's often called the Taylor's muscle. So sartorius is gonna have an attachment to the ASIS. And then the third structure I wanna highlight attaching to that ASIS is actually gonna be the inguinal ligament, which is gonna span from the ASIS to the pubic tubercle, which we're gonna palpate in a second. And that's gonna form the superior border of the femoral triangle on this anterior um, hip and pelvis. So that's the ASIS. If I sink down to the AIIS, a little bit inferior, the attachment that I'm most concerned about here is gonna be one of your hip flexors and also knee extensors, the rectus femoris. So belonging to the quadriceps group, two joint muscle of the quadriceps group, rectus femoris is gonna to attach to the AIS of the pelvis. 
Okay, so palpating the pubic bone and pubic tubercle, we want to be careful that we maintain patient privacy and also obtain consent because this can be a sensitive area. So is it okay if I palpate or I touch on your pubic bone? So it's mm -hmm. going to be on your pelvis. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my finger on her belly button and just palpate with the heel of my hand. I find that that's a lot less invasive than palpating with your fingers in that area. So is that okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put my finger right on her belly button. I'm going to sink in and I can feel that pubic tubercle, pubic bone, pubic symphysis. And I can give a little bit of pressure just to see if that's tender. But that's a pretty non-invasive way to palpate. Uh, works well on females, males, um, and it provides 